Hi, hi, and welcome to the Misguided Salon series. I am your host, Paul Goslin, creator of the series Misguided. And today I am chatting with Jean Carroll. Jean played Nadine Cooper on Guiding Light and made her misguided debut in episode six, The Meeting, as no-nonsense agent Jeeva Jones. She later returned in season three to play my therapist, Tamara, who has some pretty big secrets. In the chat you're about to see, we talk about what it's like to take a leap of faith, how it was working alongside Justin Dees on Guiding Light, and some of Jean's favorite moments on Misguided. Enjoy. Hi, Paul. Hi, Jean. Welcome hey. to the Misguided Salon. <laughs> this is so cute. I mean, yeah, do I get my hair done or what? I salon? mean, I'm still learning how to do it all, but, uh, you know, it takes practice. Like, I'm, I'm practicing on my hair, but it doesn't seem to <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, well, thank you for, for coming on and, and joining me today. And for oh, this is so fun. I've missed you. This is a good way to see you. I know. And selfishly, like part of why I wanted to do this was to have conversation with people that I've been missing and I miss filming with you and, and working with you. And I so know. And we had such fun. We, well, we still will have fun. It's yes. Great. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, this is kind of how I've been starting all of these, uh, interviews is how did you, uh, become a part of Misguided and how did we first meet and, and begin i think i got a call from my agent because you contacted my agent is that what happened uh i kind of went around the, the the agent first i emailed you on facebook oh my, okay well see it's so long and i'm getting yeah, older and that's I'm having, yeah like, you know you're senior aging, moments you're, now <laughs> your agent got involved uh <laughs> later because so you uh i i messaged you probably a really long like message about like who i was who the series was and and then I think I must have given you my number because then you sent me a text message and I was like, uh, I think Nadine is texting me right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't even recall that. You see, I'm losing brain cells, I guess. I mean, this was what? <laughs> Five years, years ago? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And then, and then, so once we talked about the script and everything, and then you were like, yeah, just, just talk to my agent first and, and uh, we'll get the ball rolling. So. And I think you wanted me to play Mo at first, the mom. Originally, yeah, I had I had uh, sent you the the idea of playing my mom for the role, and uh, and then I was reading an email that you had sent me recently. It was you were going back and forth between like, oh, I really like this agent character, um, but I also like the mom. There's like potential for both. I really, I'm going back and forth. Can I think? Well, about the other that? thing was I've been playing moms. I, I must have done five mom roles in a row. You know, one, you know, a, a socialite mom, a down in the dumps mom, uh, a soccer mom, <laughs> this kind of mom, that kind of mom. I said, come on with the mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Well, it worked out. I mean, I loved having you as the agent. I think it was the perfect uh, fit and I was able to Aww. work it um, after, you know, you agreed to be the, to play Jiva. I was uh, lucky enough to put in some guiding light like easter eggs into your your speeches and <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh i know you did that was so fun that was super fun and i loved i love jiva jones i hope well i don't know we'll have to talk to the writer gods and see if, <laughs> if she still exists on the planet but i love her and also i'm writing a i'm writing a book i was and i have a screenplay with an agent role in it but now you know it looks like you got to write a book before you can get the screenplay going it's a lot, it's yeah. like, that's the way it goes but i have a publisher that may be interested so we'll see and, and awesome. uh, yeah so yeah, we'll see so it's, it's another it's an agent but she's a mom she's a mom too i can't get away you know, from it. i mean it happens. <laughs> um but i liked you having that that uh playing Jiva and I think it worked really well and then when I was working on season three I couldn't I, I couldn't figure out how to go from dream to reality and bring Jiva with me and so when I had um I had the character of Tamara ready to go as my therapist and I I wanted to have a villain and I didn't know who the villain was for the show well, villains are so delicious oh my gosh oh my god 
And they so really are. I was in I was in traffic on the 405 and I literally screamed to myself. I was like, it's been Tamara all along. <laughs> And I was like, if we can do like little, little scenes here and little scenes there and do like pickups of um, like you selling strawberries to Stephanie, um, I think we could, we could make this storyline sort of work. I mean, it's a soap, so anything's kind of possible. I know. Um, Isn't that wonderful? You've got such entire poetic license for the whole thing, I mean, which is, it's, you know, that creative spirit. You can just take it anywhere. It lets you go. It's just amazing. Yeah, it's uh it's a lot of fun because, I mean, you know, I've always wanted to be on a soap and very you passionate. You created your own. It's even better, baby. <laughs> and I get to work with amazing soap stars. So it's. Oh, it's, we've it's, got such a great cast, too. Oh, my God. I love everybody that's there. It's so. so it's And I miss everybody. And this has oh. been like, so nice to, to catch up and, and chat with everybody. Yes, indeed. And you are so creative and so sweet and so wonderful. And I love the fact that you are the way you're approaching it and you're doing your your PR and you're you're doing everything about it. And, one and man band over here. Huh? I'm a one man band over here. I, well, today, this is kind of the way it has to go, especially during a pandemic. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking for the next season, I was like, do I even include a pandemic do i how do i talk about covid if if at all and and i decided not to i was like there's yeah. it's been too much and by the time we're filming hopefully it's like behind us like very far behind us yeah. you're getting into designer masks i've been seeing so many of them now i saw oh. a, a sequined one today and it was gorgeous i said where'd you get that she said oh my mom got it for me Walmart. Yeah. I gotta go check that out. It's sexy. I mean, I've been <laughs> buying masks. I think since the moment I was like, I think we're gonna have to wear masks all the time. So I was like, I'm gonna buy this one and this one, and then like I designed some. I put like, um, I put the guiding light logo on one. I put cool. Um, I have uh, Susan Lucci's star on one, so it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get a misguided one. I have a misguided. I actually have two misguided ones. My oh, friend um, okay. Laura got me one uh, that she had made. Someone made it on Etsy, and then um, I had one made as well. But I like it's. It's very. I realized that you need it to be like all over instead of like misguided because it's very difficult to read it when it's all the way across, and you're just like, yeah, oh, yeah. But <laughs> it's like, oh wait, wait, this is you know, <laughs> this way. No, 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 this way. <laughs> it works for my guiding light one because it's kind of like that lighthouse like motion back and I know. forth. <laughs> I mean, you need the music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, well, let me uh, let me get into some questions. So you um, you have, like we talked about have played two characters in Misguided. You did. I know, and they're both so cool. I love them both. And they they're very different. Like, yeah, was, oh, there, cool. was there a different process that you had to? play each one? Did you prep a different way for Tamara and, and Jiva? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, with Jiva, I mean, I just channeled a lot of um, agent manager types that I've known throughout my career, you know, and there are some that will just, just bring you in and push you out. And, and, you know, they're very, um, efficient that way let's let, let's yeah. be generous <laughs> you know they're doing other things but all that they've got one thing in their mind and it's making money um yeah so i mean there are people like that out there so i just thought and i thought we'd have fun with it so i i thought about that and then when we brought in the uh the tamara character oh my gosh devious yeah. you know and and sweet on the outside but you know and not something else going on on the inside and she <laughs> has a screw loose yeah so. <laughs> she also happens to be she also happens to be a mom sorry <laughs> i know and well so did G uh, ajiva so oh yeah yeah original mother in the original so yeah of course well nothing wrong with moms it's just <laughs> i wanted to have a character that did more you know yes did more and hopefully i feel like both of them are much more than just a mom and and Oh yeah, they're business women for heaven's sake, yes. my darling. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like Tamara. I like too, like seeing the difference that you you brought to each role, and uh, even from like the look that you had for Tamara was completely different than the look that you had for for Jiva, and I think it worked overall. And uh, I mean, if you're just watching, you're just from season one to to the last episode that we did. There's a there's a very distinct. Uh, difference that you have which is which is really cool and and it plays nicely like it, it like i think audience members believe that it's two different people 
Yeah, the way it should be. I mean, you good actors. I don't know who your favorite actress is. I know Susan Lucci. I know, I know. <laughs> well. but <laughs> but I mean, my favorites. I I'm, I'm watching right now the series Your Honor. Have you seen that? No. With Brian Cranston. I got to work with him one time. He's such a gentleman. And he's such a great actor. Anyway, he's doing this series now. It's, it's the final episode of the season is tomorrow night, and Maura Turney is in it. Remember her? Okay. Yeah. Okay, and she's playing a prosecutor in this. It's totally different from anything you've ever seen before. She so gets so immersed in that. I also love uh, Nicole Kidman. Do you watch her work much? Oh my gosh. Did you she see? She jumps it? into everything with two feet. She's amazing. Um, I just watched The Undoing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Oh, and have you seen um, uh, The Prom? I did. I did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, she's it was, fantastic it was with it. Really oh fun. my gosh. I so admire all of that. I mean, being able to do that. Yeah, I, I know. Try, I try in my work to do that. And I, always... I know um, that people are probably like thinking of it as an odd casting choice, but I'm excited to see how she does um, playing Lucy. I love Paul. Lucy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. excited to see how she, she takes, because I do, I think she has that comedic like chop that like you're not expecting. And, and I think she's going to, I think she'll do a good job with it. I read an interview about, well, I follow them and I watch them on, on the interview programs as well mm -hmm. and uh, read everything I can about them in the, my favorites in the trades. And she <laughs> said, she'll be presented with a project and she, her gut thing will say, no, I can't do this. I'm afraid I can't do this. And then she forces herself to go do it. And that's when she always does her best work, she says. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Jump I think off the works. cliff, baby. Jump off that <laughs> cliff. <laughs> I that bet, was... Well, that's what you did when you took on this project. Yeah, yeah. That's you actually did. there's a there's a um, quote like a, I don't know if it's a parable how you would what you would call it, um, but it was something I used it actually in my senior class uh, presidency like speech when I was oh. running. It was something like um, "Come to the edge," he said. You know, we're afraid we'll fall. Come to the edge, he said. I no. use that. I've got that up on my wall. We're afraid we'll fall. Come to the edge, he said. No, we're afraid we'll fall. They came to the edge. He pushed them and they flew. And they flew. I've got that up on my wall. That's oh so my gosh. Funny. It's yeah. so wonderful, right? I don't, I don't know where I read it. It just like stuck with me. And I, I mean, yeah. I used it. And I ended up winning senior class president. So. <laughs> well, worked. of course you did. Because you're so sweet. And you're so smart. And. Miserable <laughs> and hardworking and all those oh, good things. That's you're, you're exemplary, my darling. Well, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I took that. I mean, I took a leap of faith, and I just like, here we go. We're gonna do this, the show, and and see what happens. Yeah, and, and as you get older, and you you think about what would I have done if I hadn't done that? You know, you'd be a not, not a happy camper. Yeah. And we're all faced with those moments in our lives, and as I get older, the more I realize it. You know, if you don't make those choices to to step out on the edge and jump over the edge and go for it you know what is left you have regrets it's so it's i mean that's absolutely true and it's kind of how when i made that choice to leave new york because i, I mean I, I i was single i you know was in a job that wasn't it wasn't fulfilling me because it was just a job to pay my bills yeah um, and i i kind of was in a place where i was like i think i can do this and i just if I don't do it now, like, I don't know when I'll do it. Um, and I took that leap and I was like, let's just see what happens. And yeah. And look how wonderful it's turned out. And, I, and not only that, this is still, you're still on a precipice of even greater things. Thank you. <laughs> I truly believe we're that. We're hopeful. <laughs> yeah, we're always hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> but actually that's, that leads to another question that I was um, thinking about is this past season, um, I really like took that moment. Like I took the time to appreciate every moment while filming it. And a friend of mine had told me to, to do that because I don't think I had the first two seasons. Like I just was going through the motions. I was like, this is exciting. I'm, I'm loving this, but I didn't really stop and, and appreciate everything that I had put into it and, and see it come to life. And I really did that um, throughout the season that we were filming. Um, and it was nice to see a dream that I had fulfilled. And I was curious if there was a moment in your life that you've had um, a dream fulfilled that you were like, I just need to soak this in because it's, it's, I never thought I would make it or I always dreamed I would make it. And here I am, I'm doing it. In, in different areas of my life, you yeah. know, and, and when I made the leap, I made a leap from, um, from moving from Florida to California mm -hmm. 
and it was to pursue acting. And but I had been acting, been acting since I was a little girl. But I had done primarily in in Orlando. I, I was living at that time. I grew up in Miami, but I was doing a lot of theater. Okay. And I was getting great reviews for all these shows, but I was working a full time job. And then I had a part-time job on top of that, working at a TV station because I studied broadcasting and journalism and that too. So here I had all these things going on and I had to make a choice about, you know, which way I'm going. I had an opportunity to get a job in California and come out here and I did that. And um, I, that was a big leap, crossing the country. I was by myself, yeah. didn't know anybody, <laughs> you know, took that leap of faith, you know, and I, I look back at it now and I thought, oh, you really did it. You really did it. It was worth it because it changed the whole course of a life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It changes everything. It's, it, yeah. it's a huge move. And especially if you, like, I don't know how, if you, how set up you were when you first got here, but I wasn't set up. Like I didn't have a place to live. I didn't have a job lined up. I just got in my car and I drove. Yeah. But you did have something. You had this total belief in yourself. Yeah, I did. You know? You yes. had this, you and and you had this this drive. Um, destiny was calling you, and you answered the call. Oh, yes, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's that feeling. How can you describe it? It's like okay, so you're an actor now, and you know that when you do a great scene, there's there's a high that you feel, and you don't need drugs or anything. There is this mental exhilaration that you get when you've done really good yeah. work, and you know it. And it doesn't even matter if anybody sees it. Okay. Yep. It's just, you feel it and you know it. And it's like, I did that. Oh, wow. And it feels like you just conquered something very important. Same thing when you do this with your goal and you accomplish your goal to, yep. a, to a point, because I know you've got many, many other goals, but of course that's always what happens. You get done with one goal and then here comes another one and then yep. you want to keep going. Yeah. And I think that that's kind of the misguided story that I'm exactly kind of telling. like it it was the goal that I had was to to be on the soap and then to do this and to work with this and this and this and and it just keeps growing now like I I never really imagined um misguided growing to the to the point that it is currently like I didn't I I mean beyond my wildest fantasies and well, there's been a, well you had a built-in fan base i mean with people that you're working with yes you know so people helpful. want to see what what their favorite people are doing now and yes. and plus the internet everything is so taken off plus you know the pandemic has is a two-sided sword because more people are aren't going out as much you know and they're, so they're more glued to their screens so yes. yeah yeah and that's why i'm hopeful that you know continuing a misguided like this this video series um, gives people a little bit more insight into our lives and, and what we're doing, what we've been up to, sort of filling a void that the series can't have right now because we're not filming. But yeah, well, you know, you know it's always about marketing, 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 yes. always. Yes. Staying in the forefront of somebody's mind. Yes. And I loved that we were able to do um, the little reunion that we had with Alan in his locker room. I mean, oh which yeah was so fun and i was so happy that you were able to to join in that little group that was wonderful it was um i know i, I haven't seen to... beth in years and years and i had no idea you know i stay in touch more with frankie and mm -hmm. uh, his family i mean but i hadn't seen beth in years in years since the last time i went to uh, to work on the show that was 2009 wow i think it was you know, oh my gosh. Death, so and, and it's it, it it takes you back. You go, oh, look how different <laughs> things are. I mean, you see stuff on Facebook yeah. and whatnot, but it's not the same. But I also, I mean, I don't think she's on social media. No, so no, she's got a job, job. Yeah, she's working. Yeah, and she's working uh, for an environmental agency, as yeah. I understand it, which is fantastic. It's, uh, I mean, it's great. It's like a, a, it's it's another part of her journey, and we, right. we all have these these paths that we're on and but knowing Beth because to I mean because I've worked obviously I play her mom a mom <laughs> <laughs> but I she always had ambition she always had drive she always had purpose she mm -hmm. always had a singular vision and I can see her applying those skills to this which is also excruciatingly important with what's going on with climate change yeah. etc so I mean she's taking those characteristics and applying them in something that that she now feels as passionate about, I think, as she did her, her acting work. Which yeah. Is great. I mean, it's always finding your purpose and your purpose doesn't have to stay in one lane. Yeah. You know, yeah. your purpose can go to other lanes. Yeah. 
can I, always come back too. I mean, she can always act again, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think you lose that. Like, I think it's kind of like riding a bicycle, maybe. <laughs> right, and you just can you can bring in those experiences to enhance your other yes. persona. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, is there um, a piece of advice that you received uh, growing up that you instill? Because I know you're a teacher as well, that you pass oh, yeah. on to your students or that you've passed on to co-stars that you've worked with or just anything that really resonated with you that you, you feel compelled to share with other people when, when working with them or educating them? In, well, this is interesting because I, I keep scrapbooks. <laughs> I'm one of those. I'm a scrapbooker. Oh. <laughs> but I save everything because I want to remember and I want to, and I, I, I love history and I love to, you know, compartmentalize and keep everything. And uh, I went, I worked on a show called Ocean Avenue, mm -hmm. Ocean Drive, Ocean Avenue down in Florida. Mark Menard was on that show. It was okay. his first, he was a model, very good. You could tell a very attractive kid, and um, he was going to Europe all the time to model. You know, who else was on that show is um, Rebecca Ferguson, the White Queen. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and she now she's now she's doing Tom Cruise movies. All right, and now she's going to be in the new Dune. Oh, okay. And she's the star. She's just Lady Jessica. If you're familiar <laughs> with that series, anyway. All right, she's done great. <laughs> anyway, Mark came to me. Uh, I think I was probably the only person on that set that had done, you know, a soap in New York. And we had people that had done other series, but they were like local kinds of series. And, and he said, uh, he says, what, give me some advice if you can. And he played my son, my, <laughs> one of my two sons. And I said, well, sure. I said, um, focus on the work and, and don't get involved in politics mm -hmm. or gossip or any of that. Stay true to to the work and uh, he actually quoted me to one of the soap magazines oh. on that yeah it was like and i just came across the quote the other day he worked on all my children yeah 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 um that's awesome i think i would 100 percent agree like if you can just stay focused on the work and put your heart and, and soul into that then i think you're golden like, and it's not just for acting it's in anything you choose Yes. You know, I had an acting teacher. He says, no matter what you choose, because we had a brilliant, I worked in a scene study class with this very wonderful young actor, but he, he was going to get married and his wife wanted him to get a, you know, a steady paying job. And so she was discouraging him from uh, pursuing acting. And he decided, yeah, maybe that's what I'm going to do because they were going to move to Colorado. Anyway, the upshot of it was our teacher said, no matter what you choose, Frank, uh, put your whole heart into it and don't be distracted by the detractors. You know, even if no matter what you do, you want to be a teacher, you want to be a, a bus driver, you want to, you want to sweep the floor as a janitor, be present, do the work, go for it, you know, put yourself into it. And that's going to be the key to you finding happiness in your work and, and to find happiness in your work, you're going to find happiness in your life. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. For sure. I uh, I think that that's kind of actually how I deal with having the day job that I have is um, a Manny and, and it's, it's a lot of work. It's, but it's very fulfilling. And I do, I put my whole heart into it, raising these two little guys that, you know, yeah. I'm hoping, hoping to, you know, instill in them some, some good values that they will then carry on to the, their adult lives that, you know, hopefully have two really great men in the future. And, you know, that's that's my hope. <laughs> I came across a quote today that I'm going to use for for not just my classes but other other people. I didn't even realize uh, the Patriot Thomas Paine. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, let's see if I can remember the quote. I just I wrote it down downstairs. Let's see if I have it. It is um, uh, the enlightened mind can never go dark again. I like it. The enlightened mind can never go dark again. And if you think about it, when you commit to something and you learn something and it becomes a part of you, you're always going to have that with you. Yes. I, I mean, yes. I like it. <laughs> ah. Thought for the day. This, this is so good. This is very in-depth in and, and wonderful. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no uh, nadine would do this i love it oh, that's so cool. uh well you just said nadine so let me just quickly is oh there, baby, is, we love tea is there a favorite i don't know if we talked about this in the locker room is there a favorite um moment storyline at guiding light that you loved playing i loved any scene with justin d's mm -hmm. okay because he was such a, an amazing actor and such a giving actor and you know, it's not just me, but anybody who worked with him, you felt lifted up, you felt supported, you felt, you felt like he was always, you know, like connecting with you. Yeah. And, and, and there was truth in, in that connection. You see it in a lot of people's work, you know, you know, Cynthia, Cynthia Watro, mm -hmm. she's another one. Yeah. There's truth in that work. You work with somebody like that and you, it just, it opens everything up. You know, it's, it's wonderful. And, and he was just a great person too. So yeah. Any, any of the scenes with him. I, um, I loved, I think it was one of our first uh, times meeting. You were telling me a story about working with him and how he was so giving to um, day players or yeah. five um, to have them have their moment on TV as well. If he was in the scene with them. And I, I think that's, an exceptional actor is, is someone that appreciates everyone that's around him as well. Oh yeah. And he, he realized, and you know, now as a director and a producer, it doesn't matter if you have a big part or a small mm -hmm. part, it's all part of the part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's all part of the whole ensemble. It's part of the whole production. You can't have, you, it, it I mean, obviously you're going to have the, you know, the leads and whatnot, yeah. but unless all the supporting players and everybody else that's involved is as engaged, uh, you don't have a real, a real believable cogent story going on. Yeah. And the other thing about Justin that I loved, I mean, he was fun. He could be a funster. <laughs> he really could. And sometimes he didn't take himself seriously, but he never took himself. He never said, oh, I'm this fantastic actor and I can do whatever I want. He never did. He, he always had a humility about him. That's nice. You know, he really did. And, and he would even not go out of his way to do publicity or anything else. You know, because he he was more focused on doing the work. He was truly in love with the craft. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely he get, is an actor. Yeah. If I don't know if why saying it like this means actor, but I feel like that people know what that means. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I I define it as somebody that's devoted to the craft. Yeah. You know? Finding yeah. okay, if you could say it simply, finding the truth of the character in the moment. Yeah. And not letting your own self-consciousness uh, distract from that, yeah. you know, being being so connected that the truth comes out, you know, yeah. having the thoughts of the character, having the feelings of the character, being so connected that uh, you lose yourself in it. I mean, that's how I see it. Yeah, I am. Um... And it's not easy to do. It's not always easy to do. Yeah, but I, I, I see it when you work. Like, I see it. When I work? Yes, yes. Oh, I'm so critical. Oh, really? oh, oh, my gosh. What, like, I vividly remember the first day we worked together, whether it was you, Jean, you and Jackie um, and myself in the office. And we had that moment. It was um, after I had kicked, you know, uh, my mom out of the, the, the scene. <laughs> and it was just the two of us and... And I have this like speech to you and you're, you're just listening and so present to every word that I was saying. You're just gonna let her leave like that? What do you expect me to do? Call the police? Have you even, have you even been looking for me? Or did you give up hope? When did you stop looking for me? Did you even bother to put my face on a milk carton? If somebody stole my baby, I would never stop looking. But here you are in your, your comfy office with your posh job, with zero ounce of concern for your long lost baby. I am so sorry. I, I, I don't even know what to say. But I never stopped loving you. You didn't even know if I was alive or dead. And you probably didn't even care. Oh, I get it. <laughs> you were glad that I was taken, is that it? <laughs> because once I was out of the picture, your life seemed to be put together quite nicely. So maybe you saw it as a blessing. It's 
not true. You know what? I honestly don't care. I don't I don't even know what to feel right now. Except Except this job. This This job. Do you know why I wanted this job so badly? And of course not, because you you don't even know me. But that woman, the woman that I just kicked out of here, she knows me. She told me that she loves me daily. And she told me how, how proud I make her. And she told me that I can achieve anything in my life if I set my mind to it. And my God, I did. I am here because of her. This, this dream to be a star on a soap opera, it's all for her. Because I knew that nothing would make her happier than to see me every day in her stories. So I, I mean, I don't know what to feel right now. But I do know that I cannot be in this moment any longer and let you ruin it for me. Paul! Paul! And I could see every reaction that you were having on the inside was just right here in your face. And it was so moving to watch. It was moving to like edit it. And I loved putting it together. Oh, you're so um, nice. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, I don't see myself doing that a hundred percent of the time. And when I don't see myself doing it a hundred percent of the time, I really get down on my work. I say, Oh, Jean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't look real. That wasn't real. There was no truth there. What were you uh, doing? What were you thinking about? You weren't focused. Well, we're all, I mean, we're all critical of our own work too. And, and Oh yeah. So, but I, but to see it, I was, I remember vividly being like, this is going to be a great scene. This is going to be a great season. I can't believe that this is happening on my show. This is, I, I feel like we're taking it to the next level. Like I felt a lot of, I, as an actor, I was saying the lines, but I also was like producer at Paul. Of course. Well, <laughs> and I was like, you're wearing all those so hats. Good. This is so you. good. <laughs> well, there's a producer, the financier, the director, you know, plus your, your, your own unit production manager <laughs> handling all of that, you know, and you're the casting director and all of it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You're doing all of it. Uh, but it's you're nice. Fun. It's nice to be able to see it. And, and I, I mentioned this when I was talking to Jackie is that I I want to better myself as an actor. And in order to do that, you need to work with people that are on another level and, are, and that can elevate you to, to, to working at another level. And, and I feel like I've done that. I've brought in a very well-talented cast um, that I'm happy with. And I feel oh. elevated, so. <laughs> well, you did a, a fantastic job. You know, people people that I know from Florida and in New Jersey, where I grew up in New Jersey and Florida, and people that, that I've met even in the neighborhoods, oh, you're an actor and you've met so-and-so and so-and-so, what are they like? Um, aren't they aren't they snobbish or aren't they say, I say, no, the, the best actors, most talented directors and actors and producers are very giving people and they're very, uh, they're humble, you know? Uh, so you have the quality, darling, you do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, was there a moment, was there a scene, uh, whether you were in it or not, that you, from watching Misguided, that you enjoyed, that stands out as like maybe a favorite moment? Well, I'll, I'll tell you from both characters' points of view. Okay. Yeah. I love the, the scenes with you and Jackie in, in the first couple of episodes that I worked with you and, you know, in the agent's office. <laughs> that was just, that was a hoot and a half. I love playing that character. I love working with, with Jackie. I love working with you. Um, and then when we, later on, when we got to the psychiatrist's office, I love those scenes with you and Justin. But I also love the wedding. Yeah. Oh, the wedding was special. So yeah, I love the wedding. Like the wedding, the whole episode, it really, it really was that moment where I was like, it's all coming together. It feels really nice and authentic, and it, it looked. It yeah, looked it felt great. like you were totally connected to what was happening in the story. That you yeah. had this love, this great love, and you're culminating this relationship, and then, then it all falls apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and it was classic those, soap scheme. It, it was one of those moments and I don't know if it's ever happened as an for me as an actor where I was able to hit the same moment emotionally every single time mm -hmm. and it showed it, how connected you were to the material it re I mean it really resonated I mean I wrote it but like it really resonated and it's if not the only time I can remember ever 
having it happen the same having those same moments emotionally and yeah for and it's, any, it's a for high any, right it's yeah a high. yes it's exactly yes. what you're talking about That's always, i mean and i've had that happen on stage in some roles that i've played and i've had it i i've on Guiding Light, I had it more happening in scenes with Justin Deeds sure, than sure. than any other character. And when that happens, I mean, it's great. I, I just did a play, oh gosh, it's been a year and a half again. I did uh, 12 Angry Men, I think I told you about. Yes. And I had scenes, but my character was a total mm, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she was. But I mean, it was great to play her because she was so passionate about her point of view, which is 100% different than my personal point of view about things. But you, you know, you still have to, no matter what character you play, you've got to find what's motivating them. Yes. And getting into that headspace, I always felt like, well, I'm there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then I look back at that and I think, well, once you commit and you get into it, um, you still experience that same, that same emotional connection. Whether or not you agree with the character's point of view, at least you know that you've connected to a real human being. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, I don't know if you've seen, if you watched um, uh, Soul, the Pixar movie that came out over Christmas. Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. There's a, there's a thing in it um, where they talk about being in the zone and it's it's about a musician. So like he's in the zone when he's playing the piano and like- Same with actors. It, it's, and writers and, and writers. writers. Yes, it's very much, and and I know I, I I definitely think I felt it more sometimes while I was writing than I have acting. Um, again, I did. I don't know why I do this for this is acting, <laughs> um, but I have felt it more during the writing because I also think I'm acting it out in my head, so I'm in that moment, you know, writing it in the zone. Um, but it is, it's it's it is a high that um, kind of indescribable too. Like I don't know how else to describe it except it's. It is it's like a high. I think it also happens to athletes. Yeah. I think that when they get into the zone, I mean, it's almost like a transcendental time space situation where yeah. hours can go by. Yeah. Or just seconds, but you're so focused on those moments, you know, that it's like the rest of the world kind of goes away. Yeah, it's so true. I um and I think that that's exactly the the point that they're getting across in the movie too is those moments and uh the guy that like the lead guy that's doing the talking about it and explaining the zone is it just a sign spinner so he's spinning a sign like do for a laundry mat or whatever it is um and he's just in the zone like he's listening to music and he's like spinning a sign and just like zoned out doing it and those moments are, are really cool and I I I loved having that um, during the wedding. I just think the wedding, it came together so nicely. And Oh, it did. It did. You know, and you made the most of, of the, um, with the products, of the, the props that you had, the location that you had. Yeah. You know, I mean, you really did. It was nice. That's, so the space that we used, it was the, the second studio that they had opened was like this freestanding restaurant. And they had, um, when they opened it, they had an open house and I'm on their email list. So I got a, an invite to it and I went and I just sort of sat in the booth, um, having like their little cupcakes or whatever that they were serving. Um, and I don't think I had written much for season three yet, but I knew that I wanted to utilize the space and I didn't know exactly what it was going to be yet. But I, as I sat there, it sort of all came together and I and I knew I wanted the whole season to center sort of around this restaurant isn't it various... great when you find that inspiration that just yeah. spurs you into you know into that I mean you probably had been mulling over ideas it was probably in the back of your mind yeah but it took being in that space at that time in those circumstances to have something start to gel yeah and I knew I I mean I did know that I wanted to have a wedding like I wanted to have a soap opera wedding of course um, you did. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who doesn't want to play out a soap opera wedding? <laughs> uh, well, when you're doing the wedding scenes, you know, like when the productions, they go on for five days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the well, time you're putting that costume on for the fifth day, you're going, oh my God. Woo. But I mean, as, as, as far as soap opera weddings go for the misguided version of it, it was our longest shoot day that we It was, had. it was. You know? It just shows how much goes into a wedding. But yeah, 
planning and doing the production side of the wedding too, it was, it was, I'm going to need all of these like wedding decorations. I'm, I'm kind of planning an actual wedding. Yeah. Well, it, because it, you wanted it to, to come across that way. And I think it did. Yeah. I, you know, and I think it had a tragic I know, but I'm excited because I think all of those moments lead to a very exciting fourth season that I'm um, really excited about. And I think it has a good uh, trajectory that um, can play out. And And it's always fun to have surprises, you know, surprise. (laughs) (laughs) I think soaps are perfect for that. Like they have that element of anything can happen. Um, all of these different soaps have so many different tropes that, you know, I know, but we're not going to go for aliens, are we? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, as I can, I can go only so far, <laughs> but no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> there are, I mean, there's still things that I would love to play out that I, I, I don't know how yet, but like, we'll, I'll, I'll find a way, I guess. So figure it out. Yeah, and if you can keep bringing in, you know, new characters or, yeah. or to show different sides of things, yeah, that's that's really that's always the fun of it. Yeah, and I yeah. love I love watching. I hadn't gotten into streaming until relatively recently because I was one of these appointment TV people. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm just gonna wait until it comes on, you know, <laughs> and it's something to look forward to till the end of it. Now, let's just stream it. <laughs> well, let's see the next episode. Come on, come on. I want to see what's yeah. coming coming up next but it's it's an opportunity to really see in a short span of time you know how a whole production concept is laid out yeah for a whole season well they're doing it like it's like a a long kind of a long movie-esque oh yeah you know and then just just chop it up into chapters yeah Um, Um, but it's interesting to see people's hair grows longer and it all at once but that's okay i've gotten impatient i think that's part of what we're you know with our digital age and we're we're so into fast communication with our our, um, our smartphones etc yeah that we don't have the attention span that we used to have yes i know and that's what i'm finding you have like these tiktok videos or whatever and they're, oh, so they're short, great but they're short. they're short and then it's like we're on to the next thing just like immediately and and i'd love to get back to these long stories and and you know, sometimes the soaps filled that void because they they take a story and it plays out for months. But, you know, watching the current ones, they're they're like trying to still go fast and like scenes happen so fast and, and there's much shorter now and storylines happen like quicker. And I miss I miss those long drawn out like stories. Well, you can still create, you know, your, your character, for example, can go into so many different adventures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, he can. We're grouped together. You can go <laughs> on and on. You know, you've got your fan base now, and it keeps growing, and you're making your connections. Oh, by the way, it was great when we went to the Lanny Entertainment party last year. I loved it. Oh my gosh, it was like the last time I saw people out. <laughs> no, I know. It was like right before everything shut down. Yes. And it, yeah, it was sad, but there sure was a nice group of people. It was. Fun. Yeah, it was nice. It was so nice, um, and I was happy that that was one of the last moments that I had before everything went down. I was like, oh, okay. It was something to hold on to and remember. And when I was looking well, back at pictures, I was like, oh yeah, I did do this. This was really fun. Oh yeah, totally. And it was so fun to, to look at other people's work and see a different aspect. You yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. Always be a sponge. That's the other, you said, what advice do I mm-hmm. give people? And the other, uh, the other piece of advice is be a sponge, learn everything you can yeah. from anywhere. Be a sponge. Like, uh, well, Jean, I think this has been absolutely delightful. Like you are very inspiring to me. And I think that having you uh, the, this misguided family is, is icing on it on a beautiful cake. And I'm well, so Well, can I tell you how inspiring you've been to me? You, oh. know? you know, Guiding Light's been off the air now since what, 2009, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You know, and which it was sad. I think there was talk about trying to get a web version and do some other things. Mm-hmm. So, but I think what you've done is a wonderful creation where you take a lot of the great elements and, and you're, you're putting them together it, with you at the helm with such devotion that you have and such meticulousness that you have and perfectionism <laughs> that you have. But on top of that, you've got this wonderful way of working with people and, and 
smoothing out the rough edges and you know that's a skill that's a real skill so that shows the whole world that you have all this potential this just has to be continually tapped and let it grow like a big big tree <laughs> part of why i have these i think is just to have people come compliment me <laughs> like it's like wow that's good too. So we'll nice. that. that's like, fine. Oh, it's, it's gonna come across that way but it's not my that was not my intention <laughs> no but that's the whole thing I, mean, we're, I was talking a little bit about humility before you know i got to work with brian cranston mm -hmm. And uh, when he was doing Malcolm in the Middle, I had a scene. I was just, I was a neighbor and they had a, a what do they call it? A migrating party where they go from one house for the, oh. what do they call that? You know, I, I, I don't remember if that's the type. I, I, I know exactly what you're. Um... Like you go to one house for drinks and you go next door and you have the appetizer and then yes. you go for the entree and then I the dessert. What it's yeah. called. But, but yes, I do know exactly what you're talking about. And, and there was a scene where after a while, you know, everybody's having fun because they've been drinking mm -hmm. and there was a game they played about passing the orange under the, the neck. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I got to be the person that he had to pass the orange. <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. He says, now, no, I'm not getting too close to your boobs, am I? I says, oh, you're all right. You're good. He says, no, because, you know, I, I don't want you to be uncomfortable. I thought that was so sweet. <laughs> I thought that was so sweet. And then I saw him on a play at the Geffen Theater. We played a really nasty I, um, FBI agent. Okay total difference in his character and then you go oh and then you see him in Breaking Bad and you see him in these other shows and you go yeah. that's you know being able to and still keep your humility and to and still keep your um your gentlemanliness through it all yeah you know? and I think you have all of those qualities but that's just mm -hmm. me. thank you thank you I mean after all I am your mom sort of <laughs> 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 I'm your agent. You're you're like my everything, <laughs> and okay. also the villain in my life. So you know, <laughs> I'm excited for the next season. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, and when we're able to safely film, I know it will happen. Um, it will be good. Let's all keep our fingers crossed. Yes. Yes. Everybody try to stay safe. It's so hard. We've, we're coming up to one year now. Yeah. And, you know, people are getting real tired of it, but you got to hang in. Yep. I think the light is around the corner. I think there is a guiding light coming I, around our I, way. I, I really do. <laughs> I feel, I do feel it. Like, I, I'm, I don't know if it's just me being extremely hopeful, but I feel like we're in the, we're in the right path. So. Yes, definitely. And, and that's another thing I love about you since we're, you know. Yeah. But I mean, you have this eternal optimism, <laughs> at least. I, and we can't always be optimistic 100% of the time because that's not even human. Right. But but at least you push through and you make that effort. And it's, you know, it's trying to to make the best of whatever the situation is. And that's the only way to get through. Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like there'll probably be another version of this, you know, video podcast. I don't know what I'm calling it yet, but um, where I talk, where I can talk a lot more about like, I'd love to dive into why I'm like that because I definitely have this I don't worry attitude because I just know the universe is going to take care of it the way it's supposed to. Yeah, well, that's you know. that's that theory of abundance we talk about. Yeah. Yes. Oprah so, Winfrey agrees with that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you again for doing this uh, little chat with me. And, oh, my uh, pleasure. Let's not stop. I love talking. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do it again. We can definitely, we can definitely 1000% do this again. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, um, and love to everybody out there. And I miss Jackie so much. I miss everybody. I know. It will be great when we see Robin you. Robin, too. Oh, my yeah. God. Uh, we'll stay right there. I'm just going to hit done recording and we can jet for a second. Okay.